Hello guys and welcome back. In the last lesson, I was talking about the target attribute. The target attribute, it helps you that when you click on the link, it will open whatever you're trying to get on a new tab, instead of just open it within the same window. So let's look at the sample. Here on my web page, if I click here, it's supposed to open a new tab. And there you go. So you're wondering, why would you use that? Or when you should be using the target attribute? Honestly, there is no right or wrong answer for this. You can do it however you feel like it depends on the situation. For example, the way I will do it is I will definitely use a target blank um, if I have like a PDF document. Okay, so let's look at it. I have a PDF document here, which I just downloaded from the internet. It's a uh, just sample PDF. This is the file name, which is my PDF dot PDF. I'm just gonna go ahead and just type on the direction of the link my pdf dot pdf i'm just going to save the file and then going back refresh the page and i just click there instead of going to google let me just change the um the label to open this pdf okay just not to get confused open this or you can just put download download this pdf okay i'm going to click on save I'm just going to refresh the page here is my link download this pdf then it will open and there you go okay so now I have my PDF on a new tab. I can download my PDF here and so on. The good thing is that once people download the PDF, they can easily go back to your web page. If I just click on close here, that's it. I'm on the I'm, I'm in your I'm back to your website. So you want people to to do that. You want people to feel comfortable um you know to going back to your website without have to type your domain in order to go back to your website so that's when i will be definitely using um the target attribute okay so let's go ahead and let's create another file so i'm just gonna click on file new file Keep in mind that before I did that, I click on subline. In this way, um, I will be available to click um, on the file here. If I will be clicking outside, then I will have this. And then I will have like this type of menu, okay? So make sure if you're using a Mac, you click on the software first, on the um, um, text editor, and then you click on open new file, and there you go. In this news file, I'm just going to create a web page, HTML, okay, open, close the HTML tag, just going to add a hex tag, close the hex tag, okay, and then I will add my title tag. And I'm just going to call it uh, contact us. Okay. And finally, I will add my body tag here and close my body tag here. Okay. Just to make sure, I just going to put an H1 and just put the work contact just gonna click on save 
So make sure that you, when you save the file, you name it, contact, and make sure that you put the .html, whatever you're using, okay? And I click save. There you go. So it should be right here. There it is. Let me just double click on it to make sure that it works. And there you go. So this is my contact. This is my contact.html file. So let me just go back here. Okay. So now I have two files. I have my index.html and I have my contact.html. So I want this link and I just going to leave the PDF there and I'm going to create a new link here. And I just gonna type go to contact form. Oh, let's just call it contact. We don't have a form yet, but we're gonna create a form later. Okay, again, here you need to specify the destination of the link, which is my file contact. Just be careful with the arrow auto um, correct contact that HTML. Okay. I just click save here. And I just going to open my index that HTML, which is, I have it here ready. Okay. So unfortunately, as you can see, everything is together and we don't want that. So that is a, tag that you can use it to break lines. Okay. And this tag is called BR. Here you're using a break line. You are telling it, um, to the web page, Hey, once you get here, create a new line. Okay. And then just add this under this one. We're going to learn more about the um, break lines later on this course, because there are many two ways to, um, to create a break line. Let me just click here. I already click save. So you will see the contact um, file here. If I click here, remember, I don't have my, I didn't put the target thing. So I just going to click here. And voila, it took me to my contact.html form. Okay. So what's happening now? Again, because I'm here, now I have to go back and click here. Okay. Because I don't have a link that will take me from my contact file to my index file. So let's create that link. Let me go back to my file, which is my contact.html page. I will create a link. Go back to index.html. I will specify the destination, which is index dot html okay click save just gonna go back i'm gonna refresh the page i will click again on go to contact and then i just going to click go back to index just to make sure i'm going back to my index dot html okay so one way that you look at it is when you're using a navigation right now, we just have links there, but you can definitely design it and just make it look like this, as you guys can see. Okay. We are definitely going to do something like, like this later on this course for now. Let's just focus on how to use the link. Another thing is how we can use an image as a label. 
same thing. I'm just gonna go back. Instead of having, well, you know what? Let me just create a new one. Just to make sure. Just gonna create a link. Just gonna close this tag. Okay. I will use this reference and then I'm just gonna type my HTTPS slash www.google.com and I will use this uh, Google logo image um, to use it as a label to go to, to google.com okay uh, let me just use the IMG tag which is useful to image and then I'm gonna use the source path which is the google.com, sorry, google um, slash uh, dash google, I mean logo, dot png. Remember that I mentioned in this course that we're gonna be a lot of different extensions, such as dot png, dot html, dot js, and of course, a little bit of dot php. Right, let me just click here let me just open this a little bit more so you guys can see it if i click on save gonna just going back just going to refresh this page go to what is it let me see hold on there you go okay and remember that i mentioned um, the break line. So I did not create a break, a break line between these two. Let me just create a break line. And yes, you see it like this. And you also see it like this. Okay, we're going to talk about that later. Let me just click again. There you go. So notice that this is a link, but this is another link. So let me just create more space between those two for you guys to see it better. Let me just copy and paste my break line. By the way, um, in HTML, HTML doesn't count the space. For example, if I just do this right now, it doesn't mean that um, it will go all the way down. Okay, let me show you. I'm just gonna click on save. It's gonna refresh. And it's still there because basically um, HTML ignore white space after the first one. Okay, let me just go back. Let me just type a whole bunch of break line just to give it enough space. There you go. Okay, so now this is a link which is going back to the index. And this is a link that is supposed to take me to google.com. If I click there, there you go. It took me back to google.com, okay? So I'll show you that you can use image as a label as well as test, okay? All right, let me just go in back. So in this lesson, we learned that you can Use, you can link to PDF file. You can also use image as a label. And you can also use the link to go to another file, which is your contact.html. In the next lesson, we are going to look at it into more attributes. Well, let me talk to you more about, a little bit more about other attributes here. Um, we have the attributes, with, which is the width and also the height. We'll help you to specify the width and height of the image. We also have the attribute class. We're going to learn about that later. And finally, we have the attribute um, ID. Okay. Um, in this one, let me show you. Yes, I can do it here. Let's do it here. I don't think it's a big deal. Let's look the width of the let me make it a hundred okay 
and then the height, which is another 100. Sometimes you want your image to be a little bit smaller. For example, right now this is too big, and maybe you just want it a little bit small, like, like something like this here. I'm just gonna refresh the page, and there you go. So this one doesn't look nice, so maybe um, I should put a little bit more width, something like, let me see, maybe 150, probably 200. Let me put 200, just to see. There you go, that's much better. So we use the attribute width and height to specify the width and height of an image. In this way, if you don't want to bother or waste time coding an image because it's too big and you probably might need um, a software to cut the image such as uh, Photoshop or something else, and you don't want to deal with that, you can just specify the image um, width and height here in this um, within the, the same code, right? Okay, so in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about a little bit um, how to organize your, your files and folders, okay? See you in the next lesson.